Hola amigos, Javier here for Hub of the Earth. Today is very special. We will be seeing the Quelap Fortress of the Chachapoya people. So they've recently built a cable car to get to the fortress, but unfortunately today it is closed because of maintenance taking place on the road where the cable car is. So we're going to hike there today, which should be an adventure in itself. I started in Nuevo Tingo, which is the main town around here. And right now I am heading toward Viejo Tingo is so the older, smaller town that's by the river. And right now I'm taking the little paths to kind of shorten my route there instead of taking the uh, windy road that the cars take, which would be this road here. Gone down across the bridge, walk through Viejo Tingo. Now to hike to Quillap. It's gonna get steep. That's the trail. Too late now. That was exciting. Maybe the hardest little hiking segment I've ever done. But I will gladly merge back with the pedestrian path. Quite the pilgrimage. A lot, much longer hike than I thought it would be. Left at nine, I think it's past 12 now. And I still got a good ways to go. Five hours later, finally made it. I sure hope it's open. Wow. This is a massive wall. So it's under construction, but I believe that's the main entrance there, which is very small strategically so that if ever it would be under attack, you could only have one person going through at a time and they could be shot down by arrows or or other projectiles, making it hard for uh, the fort to be infiltrated. Wow. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive outside. Let's see what the inside looks like. You can see why the Chachapoya were called the Cloud People. About 3,000 meters in elevation. Little is known about the Chachapoya. They're relatively unstudied compared to other ancient civilizations. It's 
estimated that their population was about half a million. Wow. And then this here kind of served like defensive fortress, a religious center, and something like their capital city. It's believed that the location way up here in the Andes is one for safety. You can see people coming if it's not cloudy and also it's a good elevation for growing corn and potatoes. Now the reason why the Chachapoyas picked this spot is because it's located near a river or rivers that go directly into the Amazon so these were used as uh, trading routes. So they would have boats and the corn, potatoes, etc., cetera, et that they would um, be able to grow here. They would trade with the Amazon for uh, things that they would grow there. And then those things they would get from the Amazon and the many, many stones that were brought up here were lugged up here using llamas, which are indigenous uh, to this part of the world, like horses and I believe cows. So this tower here looks like a defensive tower where you could have projectiles coming from the top but from what I've read here this is actually more of a religious ritual burial site and the Chachapoyas were very meticulous and they were very good at mummifying corpses and the current belief as to why they did that it was just simply to uh, remember um, and hold on to, to people that their family and friends and stuff like that, but also to kind of prove their their lineage of who their family was and stuff like that. And that c could sometimes be um, used to resolve disputes of who owns what land, uh, etc. And it looks like these round circular structures here may have been houses. Not sure. Second wall here. Very fortified. doesn't in fact seem that the circular structures here uh, were homes where they would um, there's evidence of crafting breeding guinea pigs and a kitchen where they would cook food via fire <laughs> thing you'll notice when you get up here is that it's not warm. Thankfully, Chachapoya were skilled at creating textiles that often had a lot of symbols of animals and stuff like that. 
that reflected their belief system. <laughs> it's believed that the construction of the massive Quelap began in 400 AD, it took centuries to complete. It's 500 years older than Machu Picchu, which was built by the Inca. believe that this shape here is the eye of a jaguar which does look that way this cone-shaped building was a temple where they would practice rituals and worship their deities and gods. <laughs> what I find really interesting about the Chachapoya is that there's no evidence that there was really a hierarchy of power. And this theory is further propelled by the fact that there's no royal tombs. What I mean by this is that in other uh, um, ancient civilizations, such as the Inca, and I got to see the um, Inga Pirca site in Ecuador recently, um, the high priest, which was one of the um, higher members of society, when he would die, um, well before he would die, died, he would have um, uh, like the the prettiest girls in the village would be chosen to be his kind of servant and then when he would die all of his servants and family uh, would be killed because they believed in an afterlife so they would all be killed and buried together in a royal tomb but there's no evidence of that uh, for the Chachapoyas so I mentioned that the Chachapoya predate the Inca but that does not mean that they didn't meet. In fact, what's believed to have happened here um, at Quelap is that the Inca, which started further south, uh, were much more of a Roman-like empire who would like to expand their territory and uh, conquer, etc. And when they eventually came here, the Inca wanted to conquer the Chachapoya, mostly for their uh, valuable trade routes to the Amazon. They kind of made demands of the Chachapoya and they refused. Naturally, a battle ensued. And a mass grave was found here in Quelap over 200 people and it's believed that they were people that were either fighting off the Inca or were slaughtered um, and they were buried in a, in a way that wasn't within uh, the typical mummification rituals that um, the Chachapoya would do and the rest of the Chachapoya had to flee the area, uh, some going to Lake Titicaca, which is on the border of Peru and Bolivia, and some going to what today is known as Ecuador. After the remaining Chachapoya were forced to flee Quelap by, in the general region by the Inca, the Spaniards used, took advantage of this and actually convinced a lot of the remaining um, Chachapoya to join them in battle against the Inca. But unfortunately, 
um, the majority of the remaining uh, Chachapoya people died due to uh, illness from the kind of foreign germs that uh, and disease that the Spanish brought over. That's going to do it for our hike to and our tour of the Cuela Fortress, the capital and center of the Chachapoya cloud people. It was definitely worth the hike, um, but if you're in the area and planning to visit Cuela, I would definitely recommend uh, considering taking the cable car uh, which is definitely the fastest way to get here from uh, Nuevo Tingo but it was a pretty nice hike if you're into pretty demanding five-hour hikes so there's other cool things to do in the Chachapoyas region such as visiting the Gokta waterfall, which I believe is the highest waterfall in Peru. And that's on the border, on the kind of edge of the Amazon. And I actually have a separate video of that if you'd like to go see it, available on my channel. And I also have a video of bicycling the Chachapoya region, which is absolutely beautiful and just some great cycling in general. I was in Peru as part of my first ever bicycle tour going from Canada to Argentina. If you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I went and everything I did, I have that, excuse me, a little out of breath here. <laughs> I have that interactive map available over on my website, followthehumoftheearth.com, where you can click on the different locations and see the blog posts and videos that I made of those places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button below the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.